Welcome back to another episode of Twisted Pair. My name is Damon Marotti, and today we're going to be talking about our 800 series controllers and doing a product highlight on these. We offer this in two different models, which I've got both of them displayed on the screen right now. On the left side, we have the 801 high current controller, and on the right side, we have the 802 low current controller. So these are both eight button control panels, but they do have some different variations in how they run. So we're going to kind of cover those throughout this video. The first things I do want to talk about, what's the same between these two controllers? Well, we've got our button labels. We've got those that are the same. Both controllers come with suction cup mounts for the glass, which have the adapter to go right onto the back of that. And if you don't want to do glass mount, both of them also come with a suction cup plate that can be adhered to just about anything in the vehicle. Um, it's using 3M adhesion sticky stuff on the back side. All right, now additionally on the back side, if we flip this one over and we flip this one over, notice that they both have a quarter inch hole for like something like a ram mount, or if you wanted to use this, you can use that. And they also have a standard visa pattern. So if you wanted to use something like a pan of ice or uh, some kind of mount like that, you can go that route as well. All right, so what's different about them? Well, obviously their capabilities. This particular unit is designed to drive about 32 amps of output power. And this particular unit is really designed to drive low current things like light bar triggers or to activate relays that you might install, like in this diagram here. Now, because of that, they wire up a little bit differently. If we look at the high current model, we have a control box and we've got a terminal block that has no wires going into it. And if we look at the low current model, we have a wire coming right out of the back of it that's made to adapt right into a wire with pigtails on it. So how it works, on the high current model, we have buttons one through eight and button one through eight directly tied to switches one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. The first three switches are 15 amp capable each and they have their fuses and the remaining switches four through eight, those are all low current switches. They're really designed for, you know, about two tenths of an amp. So they're really made to, you know, turn on something low current like a light bar trigger or activate a relay that's wired externally. Now all wires on this one use a standard, you know, flathead eighth inch slot screwdriver. And you're just gonna go ahead and put your wires into that, tighten your screws down, and then you can pop it in when you're done. And this is an excellent place to use wire ferrules that we covered in one of our twisted pair videos. Now, as far as this one wires, this is gonna be basically wire to wire connections. So let's go through each one of them one at a time on how we're gonna hook everything up. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this off. All right, so now we've got our high current controller laid out so we can talk about how it gets wired up. So basically, I'm sure many of you have done these terminal blocks before, but you can kind of just pop it in there and kind of see what lines up with what. So you can see that like switch one is the first screw, two and three, then you have your ground, your ignition, your 12 volt voltage, and then your last five switches. That's pretty much it for this. You just get those wired up, pop that in, plug this into the control and plug this into the panel, get everything mounted up and you are ready to go. Now we, we have gone one step further. We did design a harness that handles a lot of your, um, your light bar functionality. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this off. This time I'm gonna use something with a little bit more leverage. Okay. And we probably won't even need that. And instead, we're gonna go ahead and insert this accessory harness that's already pre-wired. So this is designed to work with a breakout box. So let's take a look here at this Empower breakout box. We're gonna go ahead and just plug it right on in, get it nice and snapped in place. So what do we have left? Well, we've got two branches of wires coming out of it. This first branch is all the inputs to the breakout box that we're not using or already have tied over here. So this could be like for, you know, things like doors or park, or even, you know, in the case of an empire, you can use vehicle speed 
uh, with the Hall effects to get a vehicle speed sense into the actual breakout box controller. Now, this other harness has your power, ground, ignition, and this is your data wire. So we've got all those separated out. So really, if you were kind of throwing this into the mix, this is a super clean way to do your install and a lot of the work's already done for you. But one thing I do want to point out is in the case of using a universal breakout box, which is our newest breakout box, the universal breakout box has an additional harness that controls power and ground. So if we go ahead and put the universal breakout box in place, this is the additional harness here. And this harness plugs in on this side of the breakout box. And in the case of a universal breakout box, you're gonna do your power and ground on the, the four pin harness here. But notice how on this diagram here, the green wire from the four pin harness is gonna get connected to the light bar but the green wire that's coming off the plug and play harness does not get connected. This really does speed up the process of installation. Uh, you'd be surprised how much faster this will make your installation, but let's go take a look at the, uh, the low current and see what the differences are there. All right, so here we are, we're looking at the low current model. Now the low current model wires up a little bit differently than the high current model. One, if you look at it, it's a lot simpler to look at. There's a lot less going on here. Really all it is is a connection here and then you're connecting your power and ground and then all your different outputs. Now your power in this case can be switched to a switched um, source like ignition. Um, this does control your backlighting as well. So as long as you have power here, you have backlighting here as well. The other eight outputs or the other eight wires are basically hooked up to these eight different buttons. But this one button over here, number eight, is special. So we're going to come back to that one. But basically, you've got a wire for each one of these outputs. So basically, every time you press this button here, it's going to energize one of the wires. Now, in the case of this eighth button, this one's a little bit different, specifically on this controller. This is like a master button that can be set to turn on any other button on the controller. So when you energize this one, maybe you program it to turn on you know, your, your front and rear lighting or something like that or maybe it's turning on a, a specific, you know, arrow function that you want to have turn on, you know, every time you hit this button. But the, the one point I want to make about this is this particular button is tied to the white wire. And in this case, this white wire is not an output, it's actually an input. And what's so special about this is when you give this one power externally, like say from a steering wheel switch or something, this button's going to activate and anything that you've programmed to activate this part of this button is also going to go active. So this this is a uh, you know it's it's got a very unique feature that can be useful in the uh, in the industry, and it's worth noting and definitely worth talking about in this setting. Now, just like on the other the high current model, we have a, a low current ready to rock harness for your light bars. So let's go ahead and uh, get this out of the way here, and we will bring this harness into play. Let's kind of just get it all cleaned up so it's easy to see what's going on. I'll just go ahead and uh, do that. So when we plug this harness in, we have two breakouts on this one as well. The exact same thing for our, our, our other inputs to the breakout box. So again, we're just going to connect this to the breakout box. These are our additional inputs that were not used as part of this. And same exact wires here. We've got power ground, ignition, and then the data wire. And if you are using the universal breakout box, you're gonna do the exact same thing that I talked about in the high current model. Now, in any case, when you're using this accessory harness, this is gonna really depend on you programming your light bar to match what you want each of the buttons to do. Because these buttons are gonna basically be, you know, tied to like, this will be on the breakout box. This is gonna trigger input one, input two, input three, input seven, eight, nine, 10, and in the case of the high current, this would be input 11. So as you can see, this really can simplify, especially in this low current installation, this can really simplify things. And if we go back to the high current installation, you might be thinking that, you know, 
We're only using this to trigger light bars, but you can actually unscrew these and just add other things to them. Specifically these first three, those are the ones I would do that with. So if you needed to drive some perimeter lights or something like that, you can just unscrew that, add the trigger wire for your perimeter lights, retighten it, you know, provided you don't go over your 15 amps, you're good to go. So it does simplify the installation quite a bit when using the 800 controller and one of our sound off signal light bars. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to give us a call. At the bottom of the screen, I've got tech support's number. And then additionally, you can leave questions or comments right here in the YouTube forum. Uh, we are monitoring this and we can get back to you with that as well. That's all I've got for today. So till next time.